Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. So for the past couple of days, I've been testing out the Ryzen 7 1800X 8-core 16-thread CPU from AMD. Now this is part of the whole new Ryzen 7 lineup of processors, including the 17 1700X. We're going to have follow-up videos for those specific CPUs, but here we're going to take a look at the 1800X specifically and see how the performance results compare against an Intel processor with uh, eight cores and 16 threads. The only big difference is, is the price point. Uh, the Ryzen 7 1800X retails for about $500 versus Intel's 6900K processor, which has similar specifications, uh, retails for over $1,000. So we're gonna run through the core specification differences as well as the benchmark performance results to really see if the 1800X could come close or even surpass what the uh, 6900K can do. So without any further ado, let's Let's get right into it. Now just to give you guys a quick rundown of the Ryzen 7 1800X, it's part of the Zen family of processors and currently right now you have this 1800X as well as the 1700X and 1700 processors available right now. All three of these chips are 8 core CPUs with 16 threads enabled in the operating system. The key distinction from the 1800X uh, compared to the 1700 series is that it has a higher thermal capacity and therefore could be uh, clocked a little bit higher from the factory so 3.6 is the base clock and it can turbo up uh, to 4 gigahertz and with the XFR uh, system if you have better cooling enabled it can even uh, go beyond the 4 gigahertz mark. Now importantly all Ryzen 7 CPUs are going to be using a socket AM4 so that means new chipsets, new motherboards. We're going to be specifically using the Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5 board. Now based on my testing so far there are two crucial aspects that you need to make sure that you have taken care of when building any 1800X system. Uh, number one one is cooling. Number two is having the enough bandwidth for your DDR4 memory. Now in terms of the memory itself, I would recommend a minimum of 16 gigabytes running at least at 3000 megahertz with a voltage rating of 1.3 volts. Anything below that, you're going to run into stability issues and your system won't run properly. Now in terms of cooler compatibility, even though the AM4 looks very similar to the AM3 socket, the actual uh, mounting holes for your CPU retention plates are going to be different so you are going to need updated brackets for the platform as you can see the Cooler Master Liquid Pro 280 that we're using doesn't actually fit properly but I did manage uh, to mount it to uh, two of the holes so we do have a secure fit for this temporary testing phase eventually Cooler Master and other popular manufacturers will uh, definitely upgrade uh, their brackets so you could fit them onto the AM4 platform. Now cooling the 1800X is really darn important and you're going to want to make Make sure that you have the best cooler that you can possibly get. Uh, even with my uh, Cooler Master Liquid Pro 280, which is a fairly high-end all-in-one liquid cooling solution at idle temperatures, was still around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. And when you start uh, loading up the CPU from 4 gigahertz to our specific overclock setting, which is 4.1 gigahertz, after about 35 minutes on Prime 95, it got fairly hot, about 83 degrees Celsius compared to the 6900. K's 78 degrees Celsius, which was overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. Now, before we get into any specifics, here's just the specification breakdown between the 1800X and the 6900K uh, chip from Intel. Both, as you can see in terms of lithography, are based off of a 14 nanometer architecture. Their uh, TDP is quite different, 95 watts on the 1800X versus 140 watts on the 6900K. Uh, same cores and threads, uh, different uh, kind of clock speeds, but in the same vicinity, generally speaking, the stock frequency is is higher on the 1800X. As you can see, in terms of cache, there is a difference, 16 megabytes versus 20 megabytes. And in terms of maximum PCI Express lanes available to the processor, you're looking at 24 on the AMD side and 40 on the Intel side. And obviously there's a big price difference, 499 or roughly speaking for the 1800X and the 6900K generally retails for over the thousand dollar mark. 
All right, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a comparison between the processors, both at their overclock setting and their stock frequency settings. In terms of the overclock, the 6900K, we managed a fairly stable overclock to about 4.3 gigahertz with the voltage set to 1.35 volts. We had an awesome copy of our Intel chip over here. On the 1800X, we managed to get a 4.1 gigahertz overclock with the voltage set to 1.425 volts. I didn't Want to push the voltage a little bit further in order to get a stable 4.2 gigahertz overclock because we got diminishing returns when it comes to cooling some people may have better copies and could achieve 4.2 4.3 at similar voltage settings but uh, we're going to stick with 4.1 uh, based on our configuration right now now the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at the uh, load power consumption specifically when it comes to 100 percent cpu load on both a platform check out the description down below for more detailed information about the Intel and AMD rigs, but both have the same GPU, SSD, power supply, and RAM configuration. The only real difference is the motherboard and the processor itself. So as you can see at stock configuration, the 1800X is very power efficient, only consuming about 168 watts versus 218 watts on the 6900K side versus when we overclock, the 1800X goes above 200 watts and you're looking at about 238 watts running with the 6900K. So not a huge power consumption difference, but generally speaking, the Intel is consuming more power. Now, the performance results that everyone wants to see is the Cinebench, and here it is right over here. At stock frequency settings, both chips are actually scoring uh, pretty much in the same vicinity around that 1600 point mark, so uh, that's kind of interesting to see over there. But when you start to overclock the 1800X uh, based on a 4.1 gigahertz overclock, my best score was around uh, 1787 uh, versus the 6900 based on the 4.3 gigahertz overclock, logically scored a little bit higher at around 1802 so uh, generally they're actually quite similar even though we do have higher frequencies on the 6900k but at this price point the 1800x could definitely stand tall next to the intel giant over here so definitely interesting results now running through the passmark cpu test specifically again we can see the results kind of mirrored over here when it comes to the uh, stock frequencies both score around 16,000 points but when we over clock uh, the uh, 1800x scores around 17,000 points versus 18,000 points just under 20,000 points with the 6900k now moving forward isolating the single core and multi-core performance further with geekbench 4 you can see uh, that the 6900k and we're looking at the overclock setting specifically over here is getting a faster single and multi-core performance based on this test over here but let's actually move on and take a look at some real world performance examples of specific render time. So this is going to be uh, fundamental for any of you people that do any kind of multimedia work. The first thing that we're going to do is convert a 4K 38 second video file down to 1080p for a web distribution. And it took about 48 seconds on the 1800X versus 41 seconds on the 6900K, both at their overclock settings. And uh, when it comes to the Adobe Suite After Effects, a 45 second 4K project rendered around one minute 29 seconds versus one minute 14 seconds on the intel side so the intel is faster in this example when it comes to after effects rendering uh, same thing goes for premiere pro a three minute 4k video project uh, took around two minutes eight seconds to render out on the 1800x which is fairly fast but it took around one minute 51 seconds on uh, the uh, 6900k so you can see the intel is edging up the 1800 x based on our overclocking settings over here now the last thing we're going to talk about is the gaming performance and uh, since uh, both of these chips are fairly similar in terms of their uh, general computing experience you're not going to see really any difference over here and that's pretty much mirrored from our gaming benchmark results we're using the gtx 1080 for all of our tests and you can see 3d mark time spy uh, pretty much the same results when it comes to the general performance and rise of the tomb raider uh, using our gtx 1080 we got a slightly higher performance results on our Intel platform, but nothing crazy significant. 
But besides that, guys, that's really it. As you can see from the performance results, uh, gaming wise, there's not really a major difference between the two. They're pretty much identical, uh, especially because most games don't really utilize eight cores in the first place, let alone 16 threads. And the single core performance is pretty comparable uh, to both uh, processors. Obviously, in some performance results, the 6900K when overclocked to about 4.3 gigahertz is certainly faster than what we could achieve with our version of the 1800X clocked around 4.1 gigahertz. Now, if you have a better version of this CPU or a better cooling, you can certainly push the overclock a lot further and get a more comparable result. But generally speaking, most people are gonna probably have an edge up with an overclock version of the 6900K compared to the 1800X at this point of the game. But beyond those factors, the 1800X from a value perspective is absolutely blowing everything out of the water. There's really nothing like it in its price range and it's gonna be really Really interesting to see how people are going to respond uh, to building uh, these high performance 8 core CPUs with 16 threads at a fairly affordable price range, uh, especially with these new AMD chips. But really on that guys, uh, that's really it. We're definitely going to have uh, some build guides coming up and also uh, check out the description down below for more detailed information about everything we talked about. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support and we'll see you later. Take care.